Welcome to my video on practical aspects of optical fibers. This video will provide a brief summary of the most important concepts and properties. Besides the usual glass fibers, I will also introduce the polymer optical fiber. The video will close with a description of fabrication processes for optical fibers, which links this video to the previous one about properties of optical glasses. An optical signal usually travels in all guided modes of an optical fiber simultaneously. This fact leads to the dominating bandwidth limitation of multimode fibers, which is mode dispersion. Imagine two modes 1 and 2 of a multimode step index fiber with different mode angles. At the input fiber end, the signal is in phase on both paths, but obviously the path of mode 2 is longer than that of mode 1. Therefore, the signals of both modes are out of phase at the other end of the fiber. The slowest mode in a multimode fiber is the one with a mode angle equal to the critical angle of total internal reflection and the fastest one is guided straight along the optical axis. In case of a digital signal transmission, the sum signal received at the fiber end will be completely disturbed when the temporal distance between the shortest and the longest path equals one bit. This mode dispersion limits the bandwidth length product of a step index multimode fiber to about 20 MHz times kilometer. One could think of improving the bandwidth length product by using only a subset of guided modes in a fiber. However, after some distance, micro and macro bands of the fiber in practice result in a certain uniform mode distribution of the signal, regardless of the initial distribution. A better approach are graded index fibers. These fibers are characterized by a parabolic profile of the refractive index in the fiber core. The graded index profile acts as a lens and bends all waves to focal points. The total path length of the small angle mode 1 in the image is still longer than that of the large angle mode 2. However, Mode 1 travels through regions with lower reflective index and therefore it is faster. Larger distance and higher speed cancel out each other exactly for all rays through the center of the fiber. Although this is not exactly the case for other modes, the bandwidth length product of graded index fibers is improved to about 1 GHz times kilometer. This value is sufficient for many applications like local area networks. However, very high data rates or long distance transmission requires single mode fibers. Optical data transmission in single mode fibers also suffers from dispersion. This kind of dispersion is called chromatic dispersion because its origin is the wavelength dependence of the refractive index. The modulation bandwidth defines the spectral bandwidth of a modulated signal carrier. For optical signals, this bandwidth is usually very small compared to the carrier frequency. Nevertheless, long and short wavelength edge of the signal spectrum experience a slightly different refractive index in the fiber and thus travel at slightly different speed. This causes a certain signal distortion. Two kinds of chromatic dispersion need to be distinguished. The first one is material dispersion, resulting from the wavelength dependence of the glass refractive index in core and cladding. This kind of dispersion is increasing with the wavelength. The second kind is waveguide dispersion. The spatial width of a mode field distribution is increasing with the wavelength. Therefore, 
Signal parts with larger wavelength experience a lower average refractive index. Because the evanescent field in the low index cladding represents a larger fraction of the mode field. For historical reasons, the refractive index profile of the standard transmission fiber was defined in such a way that the waveguide dispersion compensates the material dispersion at a wavelength of 1.31 micrometer. This was the usual data transmission wavelength then. The attenuation spectrum of silica fibers shows the typical V-curve shape as explained in my video on optical glasses. They range from 1.2 to 1.7 micrometers with an attenuation below 0.5 dB per kilometer is usually considered the transmission window of the silica fiber. For historical reasons, Optical data communication is grouped into three main transmission bands. First, fiber communication systems used gallium arsenide laser diodes operating at about 0.85 micrometer. The attenuation of the silica fiber is relatively high at this wavelength, which limits the transmission distance. Therefore, this first communication band is rarely used nowadays. With the advent of indium gallium arsenide phosphide laser diodes, data communication shifted to 1.31 micrometer. This second communication band was located in a local attenuation minimum. The origin of this local minimum was the contamination by a small amount of chemical OH groups in silica fibers at these days, which resulted in a certain absorption band. Current silica fibers show no OH absorption band anymore. When the erbium doped fiber amplifier at 1.55 micrometer was invented in the 1990s, data communication moved to this third communication band. Fiber amplifiers enabled optical data transmission over thousands of kilometers through oceans and continents in a very economical way. The length of fiber segments in long distance communication is typically 70 to 100 km. This results in an optical attenuation of approximately 20 dB. At these distances, Countermeasures against chromatic dispersion are required at the current typical single-channel bit rates of 10 or 40 gigabit per second. Standard is the use of dispersion compensating fibers with a special refractive index profile which results in a high waveguide dispersion. However, Modern transmission systems are also able to compensate chromatic dispersion using high-speed signal processing. The typical cladding diameter of a glass fiber is 125 micrometer. And the core diameter is either 8 micrometer in case of single-mode fibers or 50 micrometer in case of multi-mode fibers. In contrast, the cladding diameter of the standard polymer optical fiber is 1000 micrometer with a core diameter of 980 micrometer. Furthermore, its numerical aperture of 0.5 is very large, which allows for efficient coupling of LED radiation into the fiber. The fiber core consists of PMMA. The spectral attenuation of polymer fibers is about three orders of magnitude higher than that of silica fibers. Therefore, the usable length of such fibers is around 100 meter, compared to 100 kilometer for silica fibers. For short wavelengths, the transmission is limited at about 400 nanometer. Photons with shorter wavelength permanently damage the material and make it opaque. 
The infrared edge of PMMA starts at about 700 to 800 nanometer. Polymer fibers are thus used for visible light communication. Preferred are the three local attenuation minima in the green region at 520 nanometer, in the yellow region at 570 nanometer, and in the red at 650 nanometer. Use and installation of polymer fibers is much simpler than that of Ethernet cables, due to their size and robustness. The fibers are lightweight and flexible. End phase preparation is done by cutting with a sharp knife. Current Ethernet over POF technology provides 1 gigabit per second over 50 meters and 100 megabit per second over 150 meters. As mentioned in my video on optical glasses, an important difference of glasses compared to crystalline solid state materials is that they are thermoplastic. Therefore, glass fibers can be drawn from so-called preforms, which are cylindrical pieces of glass with core and cladding structure. Preform fabrication uses a process called modified chemical vapor deposition, in short, MCVD. In this process, a gas mixture of silicon and germanium tetrachloride together with oxygen flows through a slowly rotating silica glass tube. The glass tube will become the cladding later, and the gas is used to build the core. A gas burner is moving forward and backward along the tube. It heats the gas to about 1600 degrees C. At this temperature, the oxygen reacts with the tetrachlorides. As a result, a powder of silica and germanium oxide condensates on the inner surface of the tube. This powder is immediately sintered in the heat of the gas burner. Each passage of the burner deposits a core glass layer of 5 to 10 micrometer. A total of 50 to 100 layers is usually needed for the core. The extremely high melting temperature of silica glass turns out to be very advantageous. Almost no contamination of the raw materials is able to solidify at such high temperatures. The process runs in a closed environment, which minimizes external contaminations. Together with the high process temperature, this leads to an extremely pure material in the preform, with a spectral attenuation at its physical limit. Following the deposition process, a mild vacuum is applied to the tube. The burner is slowly moving along the tube, heating it to a temperature of approximately 2000 degrees C. This leads to a collapse of the tube to the final fiber preform. The diameter of such a preform is usually some centimeters, at a length of several meters. The drawing process of an optical glass fiber is straightforward. The preform is heated in an oven until a drop of glass is falling from its lower end. This drop draws a thread of glass behind it, which actually is the optical fiber. After cooling down, the fiber is covered by an acrylate coating to protect its surface. Polymer optical fibers are usually fabricated by extrusion. Extrusion is a continuous process and allows to fabricate endless fibers from polymer granulate. The structure of core and cladding requires the co-extrusion of two materials. That's the end of my short course on optical glasses and optical fibers. Thank you for watching.